Hey y'all, my name is Katie. I'm a non-native English speaker. I learned English by myself and ended up teaching English. I grew up in non-English speaking country. My parents didn't speak English. They didn't know English at all. Growing up, unlike other kids and my peers, I had never been in an English class. You know, learning English had never been my goal. So thanks to English classes in my high school and elementary school, I had a basic knowledge of English. When I was 16, my life and my English world took an interesting turn. All of a sudden, I wanted to learn English. I wanted to learn English in a way to be able to speak English fluently. All that began when I started dating a guy who was speaking English like a native speaker. And he had too much interest in and admiration for himself for speaking English. And he was a bit mean. He would always make fun of me for not understanding him speaking English and not being able to speak English. So one day, all that got into my head and I decided to learn English to impress him, to make him love me more. I was so naive to think so, but I guess this is how a teenage brain works, right? And later, I'm gonna tell you if I could impress him or not. So long story short, after struggling with not knowing how to get started, what is the right thing to do, my uncle recommended to learn English with English for You course. So he put all the 90 lessons on a flash memory and gave it to me. So I started off this journey with watching those video lessons that worked wonders for me. The teachers, God bless them, explained everything in simple and clear way that I could understand the whole lesson, although it was in English. And my English was very basic. I had a very basic knowledge of English. So I started watching a video lesson that was about an hour long every other day. Well, before that, I tried to watch a video lesson every day. You know, but it was so difficult for me. You know, it was so difficult to learn English, to learn new things every day, right? So I changed the plan and I decided to learn English every other day. One day, I'd watch a video lesson, learn new things, take notes, and the next day I'd spend on re-watching it, practicing whatever I'd learned and reviewing my notes so that remember it better and make it stick in my mind. I was so, so motivated. I'd wake up two hours before going to school to study English. You know, back then my sister and I shared a room. So I'd wake up, I'd sneak under my blanket, use my laptop while I had my blanket over my head and my laptop so that wouldn't wake my sister up and then study and then go to school. Now I'm saying this to just tell you, I was so much determined to learn English and nothing could stop me. Was it difficult, you may ask? Yes, it was. You know, my brain was boiling with receiving different grammars, words, expressions, phrasal verbs every other day. But I was so much motiva motivated and determined to learn English. I had a goal. I had a reason to learn it. Even though it was crazy, that was enough for me to keep going. So no matter how hard it was, my goal made me to get out of bed early in the morning enthusiastically and work on it. And this is the beauty of having a goal. So if you sometimes feel tired of learning English or if you feel not motivated enough to work hard to study English, you might have forgotten your goal. So think of it. What is it? Why are you learning English? Is it for an exam? Is it for a job interview? Or do you want to impress a guy or a girl? Whatever it is, just keep revisiting it and then keep going, learn English. Whatever the reason is, 
Your goal makes you to do the damn hard work. Now, although my English had improved greatly, I wasn't able to speak English. Speaking was a challenging skill to acquire. Speaking is that thing that if you don't practice it, you won't be able to speak English. I mean, yes, I've been taking notes, I've been practicing, but practicing when you're studying is different from when you're practicing speaking. You see, when we study English, like for example, when we learn a grammar, we learn how and when we should use it, um, what it looks like. So when we want to practice it, we have the grammar pattern, right? So all we do is that we just replace the words on that grammar pattern, which is easy. I mean, yes, it's effective. It's so effective to learn new things, new grammars, new expressions, but it's different from practicing speaking. You see, practicing speaking is that thing when you put yourself in an imaginary situation or when you ask yourself a question that makes you thinking and deciding which kind of sentence structure you have to use to express yourself, which kind of expression you have to use, right? So this is what is effective when it comes to practicing speaking. You know, back then I was thinking, I was like, if I complete the course, if I finish watching all the 90 lessons, then I'll automatically be able to speak English because by that time, you know, I know lots of grammars, lots of sentence structures, things like that. So I didn't give practice in speaking a shot while I was learning English. So in hindsight, I should have put into practice whatever I'd been learning. Anyway, after four months of constantly learning English, something happened that shattered my world and my heart into a million pieces. My friend and I were catching up in a cafe. While I was enjoying my hot chocolate, I saw him. I saw my boyfriend with a girl kissing and holding hands. Apparently, he couldn't wait for me to learn English and make him fall in love with me. I couldn't believe my eyes. The world seemed to fade, then reality set back in. And then I believed what I was seeing. I was furious. I considered dumping my hot chocolate on his head, but then I decided to be mature and ignore him completely. Also, that hot chocolate was so good to waste. So I just broke up with them. So now I had no reason to learn English. I was kind of aimless as I was broken hearted, as English was getting difficult, as I was thinking I wasn't capable of learning English, as the school year went on, as the exam stress came, as all these things piled on, I stopped. You know, my motivation waned. So I stopped learning English for about a year. I mean, I stopped studying English, like practicing, memorizing rules and things like that. But actually, the learning just began. Let me explain. I was so much into Hollywood movies. So now that my English was at intermediate level and I could understand some educational videos, I had the courage to watch movies in English and watch movies without subtitles because I hate subtitles. You know, watching movies with subtitles interferes with my concentration and it doesn't let me fully enjoy a movie. I don't know if you can relate to that or not. You know, when I watch a movie with subtitle, my ears turn off. I become deaf. Listening becomes too difficult for me. So yeah, with that intermediate English knowledge, I started watching movies in English. Well, obviously I couldn't understand a whole movie, but as I did it constantly, I could understand movies way better than the first time when I did it. You know, I got used to listening to English language. And this is the importance of being consistent. When you do something constantly, your brain adapts to changes. 
On that note, watching movies exposed me to English used in real life. I unconsciously was learning how the English that I'd been learning for about four months was used in daily conversations. And that was a great review. You know, when you watch a movie in English, you are immersed in English. Characters in movies use dozens of grammars, you know, sentence structures, words, um, expressions, anything to express themselves. I remember watching movies being like, oh yeah, she used the second conditional. So we use it in this situation. Oh yeah, the pattern is that. Oh, he used the expression that I learned the other day. So in this situation, we use it as well. Watching movies frequently helped me to retain information, even though I'd been away from studying English. By that, I reinforced what I'd learned and filling any gaps in my understanding. I'd also pick up on some new vocabulary and new expressions that made sense to me. And that's why I always say, watch movies to learn English. You will greatly benefit from it. So far, so good. School came back, I was in my senior year of high school, and I was still watching movies in my free time. Now, I got back to studying English and practicing speaking when one day I watched an interesting interview of Leonardo DiCaprio. He talked about his bad luck, the scariest thing that he'd ever done. So it was so interesting that I talked about that interview with my friend who was also a fan of Leonardo DiCaprio. I shared with her what happened to him, what Leo, oh, Leo, <laughs> I mean, what Leonardo talked about in that interview. I shared with her all the interesting stuff that he talked about. So as I was talking enthusiastically and fluently in my language, I was like, what if I have to talk about the interview in English? Can I do it? So later that day, when I was by myself, I decided to give it a try and describe the interview in English. The interview that I completely understood it and I was able to speak about it in my native language. But could I talk about it in English? No, I couldn't. Oh man, I literally got stuck. I looked for a right sentence to express myself to say what I had in my head. You see, I had so much passive information. I was like, should I use this grammatical structure or that grammatical structure? Oh, what is that word that I heard in the movie the other day? But I couldn't for the life of me think of the actual word. No wonder I couldn't speak English. For about a year, I just observed and accumulated English knowledge without giving it a chance to activate that knowledge. So you know that in order to be able to speak, we have to practice speaking. So now that I spotted my weaknesses, I got a strong urge to learn to speak English. I was like, now I understand English, but why I can't speak English? I must become fluent in English. So I decided to practice speaking to be able to speak English. So I did four things that I believe contributed to my success in speaking. So the first thing that I did was that I'd ask myself a question and answer it. And I wouldn't just give it a short answer. I'd extend my answer. And that quickly set me on the path of speaking English. I mean, yes, I would get stuck. Yes, I was slow to decide what to use, what kind of grammar or word to use. But when I took my time to find the right word or a right sentence, I'd eventually come up with a right word or a right sentence. And I believe that was because I'd already watched so many English movies. By watching English movies, your brain is given thousands of English sentences. So when you want to say something, when you want to express yourself in English, your brain automatically looks for sentences that heard before, a sentence that matches the meaning that you want to express, and then produces the same one or the similar one. So over time, after practicing it many times, I found myself, I kind of could express myself in 
English. Even though I was slow, I could find a right sentence to express myself. And when I had a question, I'd ask Mr. Google. Then I took it further by practicing with IELTS Speak and Practice Questions book. It was so useful. It's such a great book to practice speaking. It's not only for someone who wants to take the IELTS test. It helps you to develop ideas for many different topics that we usually talk about in real life in our daily conversations. So the book helped me to practice and improve my speaking skill in structured and organized way. Because the book had model answers for each question along with some tips and strategies. So it was so useful. And the second thing that I did was summarizing videos. So what I did was that watch a short video like an interview or something. I'd listen to it carefully. I'd focus on what was talked about. Then after that, I try to describe whatever I heard as if I was describing to a friend what I just listened to. And after that, I try to watch the video again to see what kind of language they use to describe that thing and compare it to the way I described the topic and learn from it. I also try to learn some words, expressions, phrases to describe that topic. It was so helpful. It was like having an English teacher with me telling me what kind of language, what kind of words I should use to describe that topic to sound like a native speaker. I also kept a diary. I'd write about my day at school, at home, what happened, what was going to happen in English. It was like having an English conversation with my journal. I did one more thing that really helped me to improve my speaking skill and helped me not to get stuck while speaking. As I was practicing English and improving, I was showered with praise and approval by my teacher, my friends, and my classmates. So one day, two of my friends asked me to teach them English to help them with their English. So I was so happy to do that and I did it. And when my other classmates saw my friends' new improvements, they wanted me to practice English with them as well. I loved that teaching experience. You know, I wasn't making money from teaching yet. I was doing it for free, but it had positive effect on my English. Before teaching my friends, my classmates, I try my best to learn the thing that I was going to teach. You know, that made me to engage in that particular thing in much deeper level. When I started teaching, I mean, when I started sharing my knowledge, maybe teaching is a grandiose word, that really solidified my own knowledge and understanding and learning of the thing itself. So if you want to learn English, well, find a way to teach it. There's a bunch of studies that show when we try to teach or explain something or share it with someone else, we are more likely to remember it ourselves. So when you learn something, learn it in a way you'll be able to, you'll be able to share it with someone else. It sticks in your mind for a longer time. If you have a friend who's studying English, go, hey, I learned new thing. I learned that expression. Do you want to hear about it? And then share it with your friend or share it with your pet or with your imaginary friend. Just keep in mind the fact that you're going to teach that thing. You're going to explain that thing and learn it in the best way. So far so good, one day my English teacher came to me and asked me to be her kid's English tutor. She was like, I'm a full job mom, I can't teach my child English, I want to hire you to do this. I didn't want to take the role and the responsibility, but I'm so happy that she insisted on it. I guess she saw something in me that I didn't see at the time. I'm so grateful to her. She sparked my love for teaching forever. So finally, I started making some dough. Now that I was paid for teaching, I felt responsible. So I committed myself to teaching her son perfectly and improving his English. So with this experience, word went around that I would give the best English advice. And so many people around me took class with me. So I was learning English, 
teaching English, practicing English, and making some money from English. All was going so well. I graduated school. I really wanted to go to university immediately after high school. But due to some specific conditions at the time, I had to keep deferring my place in university for two years. So in those two gap years that I took as I was teaching, I decided to take my career further and, you know, become a qualified English teacher. So I decided to take self-taught course to develop some, uh, you know, teaching skills and professionalism and get English teaching certification. But one of the requirements was that you must be equivalent to a high C1 level and be able to express yourself fluently with accuracy. And finally, I was accepted. I took the course and successfully completed the course. All right, guys, that was my story. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you really got something useful out of this video. If you have questions, please feel free to leave a comment in the comment sections down below. I will 100% reply to your comments. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great rest of your day. I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.